Hello everyone, thank you for joining us back at it again today at White One Auto. And what we're gonna do is talk about a few little um, LS short block tips and how to avoid from having a problem. So, I know a lot of times people will grab an LS from the junkyard, runs and drives, and everything's cool with it. And you wanna put it in your vehicle, but you wanna make sure that this thing can last longer. So you pull it apart and you'll put new bearings in it, new, new main bearings, new rod bearings, uh, new cam bearings, we'll clean everything up. And that is really great. You'll put a new timing set on it so it'll last longer, all new galley plugs, get the block real clean, just to make sure it lasts longer. Now that is a great thing to do. And also I know a lot of times people wanna stay organized. You, you wanna know, hey, I pulled this piston out from this hole, I put it back here. You wanna keep all your valve train in order if you are gonna do that. I do not recommend reusing old lifters, but hey, that's for you to make a decision. But there is one thing that you can do that will cause you a lot of harm. So we have a short block right here. It started to spin a bearing. Um, we caught it because we saw uh, that the filter had like a lot of debris in it. So, and the reason why that happened is because of right here. So let me zoom in for you. So, if you will notice this rod is stamped with what position it comes from. Now I will tell you, I do do this myself. I have done it in the past. This is not the correct way to do it because once you stamp this rod, the force that it takes to stamp this rod changes the big end diameter. So now, even though when you pulled this rod apart, everything may have been fine with it, but as soon as you stamp it and start putting force on it to identify the rod, now you must, it is not optional, you must resize this rod because the diameter has changed. And if you don't resize the rod, you are playing the lottery and you could possibly have an issue. So what we're gonna do is, you can see this journal right here. Uh, hope we can get in there. Well, not a hope, I know we can. We can get in there a little bit better. So, I'm sure you can see now, there's a big difference right here. That is a huge difference in diameter. So let's pull this cap off so you can get an even better picture of it. This is how I mean, these are fresh bearings. This is how that bearing looks. And you can see right here, let's press this down some. And we have a big difference in the, in the diameter here. I know some people may say, well, hey, um, it looks like the engine was assembled dirty but these grooves are coming from that bearing material that was here on this rod, circulating its way through all of the oiling system. And that, what, and that is what creates this surface that we have right here, along with normal wear and tear. Because I can run my finger across here and it's not catching anything. But this surface right here is completely wrecked. I mean, you could, you could probably still turn this crank uh, maybe 10 or 20 thousands under. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of 30, but sometimes you do have to. But right now, these LS cranks are plentiful enough to where I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn this thing. I would just, well not I would just, so what I'm gonna do when we rebuild this one, I will get another crank, because these factory cranks are good for a ton of power. Um, 
I would just get another crank and then the rods, I don't think we are gonna reuse these rods because the only way to salvage these, these rods now is you have to get an oversized bearing and resize the hole and then um, put that oversized bearing in it. And cranks and rods for these things are just cheap enough now. It's not really worth doing that, in uh, my opinion. So we're gonna reuse the block. We're gonna toss the crank and the rods and the pistons in the trash. We're gonna finish tearing down the block. We'll get the rear cover off, the flex plate. We'll bang the cam bearings out, wash the block, and then get a new uh, rotating assembly for it. It doesn't have to be, you know, a Cali's crank and Callis or Eagle or scat rods. I mean, all that stuff is good, but for the power level of where this engine is gonna go back together at, it just needs to be, you know, factory stock components of work. So we'll probably just source another set. If we can find a good set of Gen 4 rods, we probably do have some around here that aren't allocated for build. And just new rods, um, new pistons, and a used crank. Um, and then put this thing back together. But remember, all of the issue started because when this thing was taken apart um i'm told that the rod bearings looked fine the issue comes from stamping it and then once you stamp it it changes that board diameter and then as always you have to check all of your clearances everything when you are assembling and the board is just out of round now and then you start spinning a bearing so Trying to see, maybe if I turn the light off with that, no. So, you can see that this thing is definitely worn. So this one was spinning, so journal on one was spinning, and back here, was spinning as well. So I think both of these here were starting to spin, yeah. Yeah, so the journal's on this one. So the one, two journal is trash. The uh, seven, eight journal is trash. I, like, I got a bunch of good used cranks laying around that I would just rather use one that doesn't need to be machined down that much. So this block is gonna need uh, a complete rebuild, new crank, new rods, new, new pistons, and it may not have needed to go that far if those rods were never stamped, if they just kept everything in order. So remember, take this tip. Remember, if you are going to disassemble an engine and put new rods and bearings in it, you want to engrave them, like with a little engraver, not a stamper. So thank you to everybody for following along. White one auto out.